All right, folks, it's debate time. Let's go around Twitch and just like randomly go into people's chats and be like, hey, bro, debate me, bro. Hassan and Avi. Hey, Hassan and Avi, let's debate, bro. What, you scared, bro? You scared, bro? Let's debate 9 11. Was 9 11 good or bad? Hunter Avalone is a coward. He will not, he will not fight me live on Twitch. Because he is not a manly man. His masculinity is extremely small. My masculinity is longer than Chile. His? Well, let's just say that um, we've got a bit of a case of Paraguay. Hunter Abalone, Vorch, Aristocracy, all of these pathetic loser simps. And Xanderhal too. Debate Caleb Morpin? I'd love to, but Caleb's afraid. What's he been up to? Astrology, psychoanalysis, and anti-imperialism. Vorch has no clue what he's talking about. Proof. Ah, uh, man, this is going to be great. He's going to be it's right. It's important for us to recognize that many people don't know much about Marxism. That is in true. The United States. Yes. And that's okay. I was taught in school that communism is the idea that everyone should be paid exactly the same wage no matter how hard they work. Uh, we've been taught that communism means that uh, there's heavy government repression in order to make everyone absolutely equal and it's failed everywhere it's ever been tried. It's okay to not know about Marxism. And so, you know, I don't want people to misinterpret this clip and, you know, I don't want this to feed into the stereotype that we Marxists are intellectual snobs who think we know more than everybody else. Hold you know, on, hold on. We need to be able to- Caleb, Caleb, man, I approve of the sweater. That's a, that's, that's a great sweater. It looks like your suit fits you today too. Caleb, good work. You're not slouched over against the wall? Honestly, this is a high level. Caleb's leveling up here. He's, he's doing better. Patiently explain Marxist ideas to the working class. Explain to working people why it is that imperialism and the global system of monopoly capitalism is bad for them. Why it's necessary to... Now, the only problem with this fit is that he'd look good if he went out like this. But you just know he's going to go out and put like a fucking trilby on and just ruin it all. So, I'd give it like an 8 out of 10 as is. But once he leaves the house, I, I cannot vouch for him anymore. I take no responsibility for my rating. Stand in solidarity with people around the world that are struggling against imperialism. Why it's necessary to fight for society where the banks, factories, and industries and centers of economic power are in the hands of the people. So I want to be clear about that. The only reason that I'm making this video is because a lot of people listen to Vosh. A lot of people listen to this Vosh character. And this Vosh character is somebody that presents himself as an authority about Marxism. Sure, he does. And many people are learning their Marxism from Vosh. And yes, that is a problem. That is true. Because and that Vosh is a problem. clearly has no idea what he's talking about. That is he doesn't true. know what he's talking about. This guy doesn't know Lenin from a pipe organ. He feels like he supports no the understanding He also supports the Holocaust. Of Marxism, of socialism, of anti-imperialism, class spinning. struggle, etc. And that's pretty clear if you watch this clip I'm about to show. I think that people who claim they do this or that on principle you are usually butt? doing so because they're uncomfortable with the consequences of their action. But you don't need to take it from me. Take it from Vladimir Lenin. The following is an excerpt from an essay written by Sylvia Pankhurst, recollecting a discussion she had with Vladimir Lenin during her attack. I've already fucking responded to the, this video of Vorsch, like, like, that was so funny. Vorsch claiming that, like, Marx, Lenin, and Engels want you to vote for Joe Biden, that was fucking a classic. Why not have Caleb Morpin jump into and destroy him as well? Tenants of the Second Congress of the Communist Internationale. Internationale. Oh, that's great. Inter- uh, I can't even pronounce it the way that he said that. It's so unique. I've never heard that before. The Second Congress of the Communist Internationale. Internationale. That's great. I have a feeling that she wasn't at the Congress of the Communist Internationale because the Internationale is a song. <laughs> Okay, I don't think this is the right angle to go for. I, I, maybe he's just making fun of his pronunciation here. Because it was the international. The 
Internationale is a song associated with communism. It was written during the Paris Commune of 1870. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Caleb. Of all the things that you could debunk Vorsch on, you chose to go with him mispronouncing a word. Dude, come on, I was excited for this one, but he's really dropped the ball here. I mean, I'm glad to have heard the song, but like, Caleb, you could, like, anything he says about Marxism is like so easy to just refute, like, you don't have to go with the pronunciation, but maybe this is just like an, a joke, right? It doesn't seem like he's very straight faced, but maybe he gets to the real point. One, communists generally raise their fists and salute like that when they sing it. Uh, it's not an organization. What Vosch is referring to is the Communist International, which is the third international. In fact, one of the best books I've ever read on Marxism is The History of the Three Internationals by William Z. Foster. The first international was created in Marx's lifetime. It eventually broke apart due to fighting with anarchists. The second international uh, was pro-imperialist. It was a social democratic group that became more and more pro-imperialist, eventually broke apart Fascist. as World War I was breaking out. Uh, and the third international, uh, or the communist international, sometimes called the common turn, was the global organization of communist parties that was created after the Russian Revolution and eventually broke apart or dissolved during the Second World War. But the fact that Vosh has no idea what he's talking about, the fact he says it, you know, Oh my god, is that really it? I don't think there's long enough left in this video for a real debunking. I had really high hopes here from Caleb. I thought he was gonna like fucking shit on Vosh, like just completely misinterpreting really obvious theory. But he's really just going for the, the, the mispronunciation. The Communist Internationale. I mean, that is very funny. That Vosh, like, for some reason, read international in like a really bad, like, I don't even know what to call that, like, like an Anglo, like, approximating a bunch of different Romance languages all at once. But it's funny, it's not like actually a point against him. You know, as if he's educated, the Communist Internationale. It shows you that Vosh has absolutely no clue what he's talking about. There's so much other stuff in that video that shows you that he has no clue what he's talking about, Caleb. And even you, even you could get him on it, man. Man, I was so excited for this video. He has no idea what the first international was, what the second international was, what the third international was. He has no idea about the organizations that they stand for. And he embarrassingly uh, rattles off these quotes as if he's an expert. It's pretty clear somebody else gave Vosch this quote from an essay by Sylvia Pankhurst. I really doubt that Vosch was just doing a little reading one day and came... Oh, this is where it gets into, like, Vosch was given this quote by his CIA handler or whatever, rather than just being a fucking dumbass. I tell you what Vosch did. He Googled and he found this on the first page of Google. That's what he did. came across a quote from Sylvia Pankhurst. Uh, I can tell you that there are people who feed... Vosh information. There are people who hand him, uh, hand him quotations to use, tell him what to say. And that's a little bit concerning. We don't know who these people are. We don't know who is with <laughs> Man, Ka this is like what I said. Like, Caleb bases so much off nothing. Like, Vosh has people who hand him, like, shady figures who hand him quotations and tell him what to, what to read. Like, people who just, like, take shit off the first page of Google for him. Look, I personally do not have a very high opinion of Vosh, but if Hunter Avalone can click on things on the first page of Google, even Vosh can, okay? Even Vosh can. It's possible. Whispering in Vosh's ear. What we do know is that Vosh somehow thinks that as a Marxist, you should advocate uh, the violent overthrow or CIA coups against the Russian government. Vosh thinks that you should try to label legitimate anti-imperialists as Nazis and try to, uh, try to incite violence against them, try to label people who oppose war with China, people who question allegations about China as being the same as neo-Nazis in the hopes that someone will be violent toward them. Vosh is a very, very dangerous person. He has no idea. This is the same thing that Caleb has said for like two years now about how BreadTube is trying to make Antifa like do violence against him or whatever. This I had, man, going into this video, I had so much, like I was hyped, man. Caleb was going to fucking bring Vorsch down and destroy him. And it just ended up being like the, 
the stupidest thing to focus on, fully straight face too. Like he didn't joke about it or anything. He took it very seriously that Walsh, for some reason, decided to pronounce the word international with a fucking whatever the fuck that was accent. God damn it, Caleb, man. You, you could have done great things here. Low video. What he's talking about, about Marxism. Uh, and uh, yeah, oh you know, God. when someone goes around telling you, uh, telling you about Lenin and Sylvia Pankhurst uh, at the Communist International, uh, they're particularly Internationale. Dangerous. Man, that was um, disappointing. Stop the lies. Message in defense of Kayla Morpin and anti-imperialism. What the fuck is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's been going on? What have I missed? This is like one of those videos that like um, in, the, in the beginning of the pandemic where like a bunch of celebrities sang a song to like raise your spirits or whatever for the, for the quarantine. Except it's like a bunch of people like independently filming videos to say that Caleb Morpin is based. I should do this with all of my simps. Simps, every single one of you film a video about how good I am and how I am morally superior and everyone should give me money. And then I'm going to edit them all together and upload it to my second channel. No joke. No joke. Do that, upload it to YouTube, and um, like post the link in my comments or something, and I'll, I'll make a compilement of like a parody of this. It'll be called Stop the Lies, Message in Defense of Bad Empanada and Anti-Imperialism. Do it. And if you can wear a suit while doing it, that's good. So unironically do that, and I'll make a real second clip, channel clip of it. And... I will monetize it and make money off your work, and that will be the fucking coup de grace of it all. We decided to make this video because of the lies being spread about someone very important to us, journalist and political analyst Caleb Moffat. The lies have got to stop. <laughs> Isn't that Peter Coffin's new wife? Analyst Caleb Moffat. The lies. Oh my god, like everyone has like their own sentence to read from the script. This is fucking hilarious. Whoever had this idea is amazing. Have got to stop. Lies have got to stop. These lies have got to stop. These lies about CPI have got to stop. The lies have to stop. The lies. Why? I'll lie if I want to, motherfucker. Have got to stop. The lies need to stop. The lies have got to <laughs> stop. Peter Coffin! These lies about Caleb Maupin. The lies that are being told about Caleb Maupin. The lies about Caleb and CPI need to stop. Have to stop. Really has to stop. Have got to stop. Have absolutely got to stop. You people are smearing him with lies, fabrications, and distortions. The idea that Caleb Maupin is a fascist, neo-Nazi, white supremacist, Trump supporter, or some sort of racist is completely bullshit. Stop treating him like Richard Spencer. You're making yourselves look foolish. Long before Black Lives Matter was ever tweeted, Caleb was attending court with police brutality victims in Cleveland. He recorded two teenage girls who had been beaten up in front of Collinsville. This, this guy's like, this is like Caleb Maupin's fucking... Remember Caleb Maupin's old intro video to his channel? This guy's basically reading the copy for that. Amazing. High school. And it was his footage that got them acquitted. In 2015, Caleb risked his life trying to bring medical aid to the people of Yemen who were being bombed by Saudi Arabia with US support. One of the main life. voices making these crazy and over the top allegations against Caleb Maupin is the Communist Party USA. This Race. is an organization that worked very hard to register people to vote for Joe Biden. You know, this guy. And you ain't black. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. They must be taken off the street. They're gonna put y'all back in chains. Madam President, we have predators on our streets. This is the Communist Party of the United States engaging in individual smear campaigns, liberal Twitter crap. Caleb doesn't even hate- Yeah, Peter Coffin would never engage in liberal Twitter crap. Neither would Caleb Morpin. Hate the Communist Party, in fact- Man, look at this guy, he's like in the fucking studio. This is a real newsman. If this guy supports you, you know you're on the right side of history. He's one of the main promoters of their important history and class struggle. I know many people who have joined the Communist Party because of Caleb. People need to actually read Caleb's work. People should actually read Caleb's work. People should actually read Caleb's work. People should actually read. I read it. It was very funny. Caleb Moppin's work. People should really read his work. People need. What about he? You should also read his book, which was. He made a book like about how like Israel caused the, the financial crisis. Like, Israel alone caused it. And in that book, he made sure to, like, change people's names to, their, to like, their Jewish name that they don't use, their Jewish birth name that they don't use anymore to emphasize the fact that they were Jewish. 
So yeah. You should, you should read that one. Should we read Caleb's work? People should actually read Caleb Marvin's work. People actually need to read- It's like the same, like, what is this, like, six or seven people just re reading read off Caleb a script. Marvin's work. If you want to know what he actually stands for, it's very easy to find out by reading the books that he's written. I don't care what he stands for, he's a law cow. Or listening to his conversations and so forth. As Mao Zedong said, no investigation, no right to speak. They can read this is amazing. Caleb's work, they can read the CPI's other work, and they can form their own conclusions without giving other people the power of telling them what to think. If you do, you'll see that none of the hype is true, as well as learn important information on the global struggle for peace. They're all sitting here, they're all in a circle reading Caleb Morpin's book. Oh my god, I fucking love the city builders. They rule, dude. It's the Caleb Morpin prayer circle. This is the city builders reading the book by Caleb Maupin called We Are City Builders, all together in a circle. I love the fucking city builders. And develop them. Caleb's books are full of important but forgotten history showing how the fight against racism and US imperialism are combined. You'll learn how American workers need to stand against their wars for profit. Caleb is an actual anti-imperialist. Caleb Maupin is an anti-imperialist through and through. A progressive socialist through and through. There were so many young revolutionaries that, that felt a need to send me Facebook messages and emails while I was in Iran, informing me as if I didn't know that the Islamic Republic of Iran are not communists. Well, this is blatantly obvious, but it's irrelevant. I don't support the Islamic Republic of Iran because they're communists. Malcolm X wasn't a communist. Cesar Chavez wasn't a communist. John Brown wasn't a communist. If you have an ideological criteria or a checklist for who you will stand with against imperialism, you aren't going to get very far in the real world. That's just a fact. <laughs> You see, the problem isn't that he stands with them against imperialism. The problem is that he stands with them, period, on everything. Not just against imperialism. I've taken great risks and stood shoulder to shoulder with many people I strongly disagree with at Occupy Wall Street protests and at Black Lives Matter protests, and I'll do the same internationally. Communists should read City Builders and Vandals by Caleb Morpin. Caleb argues that many- Man, this guy's attacking my one, one of my ears right now. Many leftists have been reduced to vandals in that their sole purpose is to destroy rather than build. Caleb has been working really hard to bring people together through an economic lens, through the working class, through uniting people in the United States who are suffering. Um, not just because of the pandemic, but because of everything that led to it. The Empire wants us to be doing that right now, to be finding each other. The future of America will not be determined by silly Twitter feuds and Facebook debates. State agencies. That's so funny because that's most of what these people are engaging in. And a lot of these operatives to really. Oh, look! The COINTELPRO Wikipedia page means that the CIA is attacking Caleb Morpin every single day with their number one agent, Vosh. Stop any sort of revolution from actually happening. The only purpose they serve is to attack communists like Caleb Morpin, who refuse to line up behind the Democrats. We should be directing our forces against the US government and imperialism. Uh, I was like some guy with like a fucking Australian slash New Zealand accent talking about the Democrats, man. They have nothing to do with you. I'm Caleb for 10 years, and he has always been committed to an anti-imperialist fight for the It's obviously scripted, yeah. It's incredibly scripted. It's like, hey guys, can each of you read off these phrases and I'll, I'll edit them into a video? of conditions for people all over the world, the future of humanity. In order to bring people together, you have to bring them in. And Caleb has been trying really hard, as have many of the members of his organization, been talking and outreaching to people who a lot of the left has lost to the right. Socialist politics and liberal politics are not synonymous. The future of America is with the broad masses of people. Black, white, Asian, Arab, and Latino. One united class struggle against the bankers and war makers. Let us not forget what Lenin said. the bankers. Mentioning bankers rather than just like bourgeoisie is very weird. Like bourgeoisie encompasses bankers too. So to mention bankers specifically, it really comes off as anti-Semitic, even if they don't mean it. Because I can't, I can't, you know, mentioning bankers in some contexts is fine if you're talking about literal banks, but like as a general thing like that, it's not the bourgeoisie that they talk about. It's just bankers. That doesn't sound good. I don't think that they, I maybe, I don't think they mean it that way, but it doesn't sound good at all. Therefore, it is our duty, if we wish to remain socialists, to go down lower and deeper to the real masses. Get out of the left and liberal milieu if we actually want to reach the broad masses of working people. We need to stop all the childish bickering, get out of the movement, and get to the masses. I read about how when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement was organizing and protesting, 
There were obviously many people who disagreed with them uh, for various reasons. Uh, and sometimes these people who did not agree with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, they would assemble um, and they would have manure and feces and they would throw them at the civil rights marchers. Did you know this? This happened. The Southern racists, you know, go away and okay. throw, throw manure little feces and feces. Ah, this is why he hates Fort Slime. And he's going to, I'm going to predict what he says here. And that is why I don't like Fort Slime. He identifies himself with slime. The working class does not like slime or other disgusting things like manure and feces. And I thought, I remember reading that as a kid and thinking, my goodness. Now, imagine one of those people was sitting in front of me. What would they have to say to me today? So you threw, you threw feces at Dr. Martin Luther King. You threw feces at the civil rights marchers. How do you defend yourself? What would they say? Well, that was, it was the, everyone else was doing it. Well, you know, I mean, you know, Martin Luther King was, he was bad. He was like opposed. They would have no defense. They would feel despicable, right? How, how can you look yourself in the face having done such a thing? And it's with that understanding that you should never join the mob. You should never just go along with popular sentiments. It's with that understanding that as someone who works in the press, I will never throw shit at Russia. I will never throw shit at Iran. I will never throw shit at Venezuela. I will never throw shit at China. I am not. Basically, literally just saying that he will never ever say anything negative about certain countries. It doesn't come off as good, it just comes off as being incredibly dogmatic. Like, equating literally throwing actual m fucking feces at someone with, like, even criticizing certain countries or governments at all is very weird. Not gonna join a campaign to lay the case for war. I will never do it. I'm not going to spread lies about weapons of mass destruction. I'm going to question their allegations about Uyghurs. Their questions, their allegations about chemicals. I hate Uyghurs, man. Uyghurs. I hate your allegations about the Uyghurs. Uyghurs. Chemical weapons. I By Caleb's logic, as we just went over, you, pro you pronounce a thing wrong. That means you have no idea what you're talking about, and no one should ever listen to you ever again. So he pronounced Uyghurs wrong. Uyghurs. So he's discounted forever. He's gone. Caleb, that's the end of it. That's how, that's, that's the fucking rule. Get out of here. Is he doing like a, yeah, fucking, woohoo. Give me some noise. This is like fucking DJ Caleb Morpin right here. Yeah. Fucking Caleb Morpin DJs like a mad cunt. Like fucking John Howard back in the day. Exactly the same, there's no difference. We need someone to edit this into DJ Kayla Morpin. Okay, let's go to the end. I will never be involved in a shit-throwing campaign when they try to whip up the hysteria to justify another one of their wars. I'm not gonna do it! I don't care if it makes me unpopular. I had good hopes for the first video, which were crushed, and the second one was amazing. Incredible, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm very impressed. I love Caleb Morpin. Caleb Morpin, come on stream, I love you. Mwah. Morpin DJs for the Uyghurs like a mad cunt.